Good, a good, good afternoon, morning, or evening, whatever it is for you. Um, in this video, I would like to address how a Jew becomes a Christian, or why a Jew might be a Christian. So first, uh, my background, my grandfather, Max Leventhal, and my grandmother, Beatrice Leventhal, with my mother, saw to it when I was younger. Uh, this used to be called um, Seabreeze Park, from what I remember. Um, and near Seabreeze Park, today, there's something called Chabad Seabreeze Jewish Center. Back then, uh, this wasn't, that wasn't the name. Just like Astor Levy Park, uh, from what I recall, was called Seabreeze Park. And they saw to it that I got bar mitzvahed here. So although we weren't particularly religious, my grandfather would go to local uh, temple on the holiday. Uh, they would often eat kosher. And uh, um, like on some holidays, uh, as a little kid in the street, uh, I would go, you know, with the sukkah, to several temples and and visit and eat and uh, you know get candy and stuff. So I do have a little bit of a background, um, although I was not particularly religious when I was younger. Neither did I consider my family that way. Now um, I will use uh, Safaria. Oh, I should also say for this, um, let me open this up. I will use Hashem for the creator of the universe, and I will link this page. It's an interesting discussion of why somebody would use Hashem uh, for the creator of the universe, just out of respect for those who might be listening to this video. Okay, now in, um, I'll use Sepharia for the Tanakh, or what some call the Old Testament. Uh, Sepharia has the Talmud. I never knew about the Talmud as a little kid, uh, and, uh, but uh, in Genesis 4.4, it says, In the course of time, Cain brought an offering uh, to Hashem from the fruit of the soil. And Abel, for his part, brought the choicest of the firstlings of his flock. Hashem paid heed to Abel and his offering. But to Cain and his offering, um, Hashem paid no heed. Cain was much distressed, and his face fell. So you see uh, the children of Adam and Eve are listed in Genesis at the beginning of the Bible, as making an offering. In Genesis chapter 8, it says, Then Noah built an altar to Hashem, and taking of every pure animal and of every pure bird, he offered burnt offerings on the altar. Hashem smelled the pleasing odor, and Hashem resolved, Never again will I doom the earth because of humankind, since the devisings of the human mind are evil from youth, nor will I ever again destroy every living being as I have done. So notice Noah is uh, making a sacrifice or offering. Um, every pure or uh, you might say kosher animal, right? And also notice it says, the devisings of the human mind are evil from you. So, uh, okay, next, Genesis 20. We saw at the beginning, Adam and Eve's children, Noah. In Genesis 22, on the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his servants, You stay here with the ass. The boy and I will go up there. We will worship and we will return to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and put it on his son Isaac. He himself took the firestone 
and the knife, and the two walked off together. Then Isaac said to his father, Father, and he answered, Yes, my son. And he said, Here are the firestone and the wood, but where is the sheep for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, It is God who will see to the sheep for this burnt offering, my son. And the two of them walked on together. They arrived at the place of which God had told him. Abraham built an altar there. He laid out the wood. He bound his son Isaac. He laid him on the altar on top of the wood. And Abraham picked up the knife to slay his son. Then a message of Hashem called to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham. And he answered, Here I am. Do not raise your hand against the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your favored one, from me. When Abraham looked up, his eye fell upon a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering in place of his son. Okay, that's Genesis 22, and we see that Abraham made a sacrifice, and actually it was supposed to be his son, but yet God provided the sacrifice for Abraham. That's actually very important because I believe that pictures something in the future. All right, Genesis 32. Jacob then, uh, well, actually Genesis 31 near the end. Jacob then offered up a sacrifice on the height and invited his kinsmen to partake of the meal. After the meal, they spent the night on the height. Okay, so I can go to different places, but it's not hard to see that Jacob offered a sacrifice. You very well know that Moses uh, in the law uh, the Torah, that sacrifices were offered up. I don't think I need to pause there to show you that. In Ezra 3, uh, th they set up an altar on its site because they were in fear of the peoples of the land, and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, burnt offerings each morning and evening. Uh, then they celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles, as, as it is written, with its daily burnt offerings in the proper quantities on each day, as is prescribed for it. And you know, the Talmud explains stuff uh, about the sacrifices. So you know the importance of the sacrifices. And you see, after, after the captivity, when the second temple was built, they went and returned to the sacrifices. Uh, you see here in Ezra 3, it's described. And you, uh, you very well know that around 70 AD was the, uh, or CE, <laughs> uh, uh, was the siege of Jerusalem. And in there, uh, the second temple was destroyed. And you know that in the second temple, the, so the sacrifices ceased after the second temple was destroyed. The sacrifices are central, uh, yet they were ceased. The Talmud is, uh, kind of explains uh, that transition to some degree. But I would like to present uh, something else. I think you know where I'm going with this. In Isaiah 53, uh, again on Sepharia from the prophets, Who can believe what we have heard? Upon whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he has grown by his favor like a tree crown, like a tree trunk out of arid ground. He had no form or beauty that we should look at him, no charm that we should find him pleasing. Who do you suppose that's speaking of? He was despised, shunned by men, a man of suffering, familiar with disease, 
as one who has who hid his face from us. He was despised. We held him of no account. Yet it was our sickness that he was bearing, our suffering that he endured. We accounted him plagued, smitten and afflicted by God. But he was wounded because of our sins. Like a sacrifice, right? But he was wounded because of our sins. Crushed because of our iniquities, he bore the chastisement that made us whole. And by his bruises we are healed. We all went astray like sheep, each going his own way. And the Lord visited upon him the guilt of Of all of us. He was maltreated, yet he was submissive. He did not open his mouth, like a sheep being led to slaughter, like a ewe dumb before those who shear her. He did not open his mouth. By oppressive judgment he was taken away. Who could describe his abode? For he was cut off from the land of the living. Through the sin of my people, who deserved the punishment, and his grave was set among the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no injustice and had spoken no falsehood. But the Lord chose to crush him by disease, that if he made himself an offering for guilt, he might see offspring and have long life, and that through him the Lord's purpose might prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see it. He shall enjoy it to the full through his devotion. My righteous servant makes the many righteous. It is their punishment that he bears. Assuredly, I will give him the many as his portion. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil. For he exposed himself to death and was numbered among the sinners. Whereas he bore the guilt of the many and made intercession for sinners. Now, you know, I believe that that is speaking of Jesus Christ. And I believe when Abraham uh, had God provided the sacrifice in place of Isaac, you know, I believe that pictured Jesus Christ. Now in the New Testament, John 1, 29, the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ became sin that knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, Jews denied that Jesus died and rose. It even says that here in the book of Matthew, Matthew 28, 12, And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. Matthew 28, 13, saying, Say ye, His disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Matthew 28, 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. Matthew 28, 15. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. In fact, you read it in the Talmud where... They say this, that uh, Jesus uh, was stolen away and that he didn't actually rise from the dead. That is the denial they give. Now, that reference I read in Isaiah 53, Acts is the tradition, the transition from the uh, Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to the rest of the New Testament. Acts is the history of the spread of Christianity first among the Jews. One example here is Philip speaking to an Ethiopian. In Acts 8.25, And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, 
returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. So I'm not going to claim the Ethiopian was Jewish, but he's clearly going to Jerusalem to worship. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Esaias the prophet. So obviously he's reading the Tanakh, the prophets. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to his chariot, to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Esaias and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb, dumb before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? for his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh this the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found at Azotus, and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Okay, so that is the connection of the text that I read in Isaiah 53. And... Uh, it is mentioned in Acts 8 in the New Testament. Again, this is Jesus Christ. When the sacrifice is ceased, uh, Jesus Christ is the, the replacement for all those sacrifices. Um, the Apostle Paul, let me read here. But Paul, now remember I said these were Jews at first. But Paul said in Acts 21.39, but Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. And when he had given him license, Paul stood on the stairs and beckoned with the hand unto the people. And when there was made a great silence, he spake unto them in the Hebrew tongue, saying, Acts 22, men, brethren, and fathers, hear ye my defense, which I make now unto you. And when they heard that he spake in the Hebrew tongue unto them, they kept the more silence, and he saith, I am verily a man which am a Jew, born in Tarsus, a city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are this day. And I persecuted this way unto death, binding and delivering into prisons both men and women. He's referring to Christians. As also the high priest doth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren and went to Damascus to bring them 
which were bound unto Jerusalem for to be punished. Now, it is on the way there that he, uh, skipping, and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. So Paul was a Jew. He sat at the feet and learned from Gamaliel. Uh, so uh, you probably recognize that name. I believe you might find that in the Talmud, who he is. Now, Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, this man, Paul, who was speaking there in Acts 22. Uh, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen, that's after he rose from the dead, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen above, of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. You heard me read in Acts 22 an example of when Jesus appeared unto Paul. But Paul mentions all of these witnesses as a witness, and he says that they are saved, um, that Christ died for our sins. See, the sacrifices were ceased. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. It was necessary, by the way, that he would rise again, uh, because otherwise wouldn't we be guilty of Jesus Christ's murder? But Jesus Christ, although we put him on the cross, he was our sacrifice. He also rose again from the dead. In fact, uh, if you'll bear with me a few more minutes here to close this out, justified uh, means essentially to be made righteous. See, much more than, let's see. Well, you can search uh, the word justified. There's many places where you can see uh, the word mentioned. For example, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That's in Romans 3.24, written by Paul. Uh, Romans 3.28, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 3.28. Uh, if you want a discussion of the law and the relevance of of the law, uh, then uh, you should probably go to the book of Galatians. If you want to understand um, Jesus Christ dying for our sins, his sacrifice, I would recommend uh, that you consider looking over uh, um, the book of Hebrews. So if I look up maybe one sacrifice. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. That's Hebrews 10, 12. So 
Again, lastly and close, we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ and him only. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No, no one comes unto Hashem but by him. Again, 1 Corinthians 15. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you will believe on him, through him you have forgiveness of your sins. And Jesus is the only way to God. Thank you.